You've probably heard this advice a thousand times before. Just eat less and move more. If you want to lose weight. And while this is obviously true to some extent, that is only part of the story. And there's a smarter, more sustainable way to burn more calories and with that, body fat. Without constantly having to eat less and less and less. In case you're new here, welcome. I'm Hannah. I'm also a health coach with certification in nutrition and in fitness. And in this video, I'm going to explain how your metabolism, aka your body's calorie burning machine, actually works, which factors determine how many calories your body burns every day and how much of that you can actually influence. We'll bust some common myths, like if you can actually have a slow metabolism, or if these people saying I can eat anything I want and I won't get weight are just lying, whether your metabolism actually gets slower after the age of 30, and about what you should actually do to lose weight without wrecking your hormones, your relationship to food, or your sanity. As usual, in all of my videos, everything I say in this one is based on current research. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about the basics. You probably already have an idea of what your metabolism is. In short, Metabolism is everything your body does with the food and drinks you put into it. Your metabolism determines how many calories your body burns every day, aka your total daily energy expenditure. And this total daily energy expenditure is kind of like a little pie consisting of four different slices. And the bigger the slices of the pie, the bigger the pie, and the bigger the pie, the more you can eat without gaining weight or the faster you will lose weight. Slice number one is your basal metabolic rate or BMR, which is the calories your body burns by just existing, even if you did not do anything all day long. And that makes up about 70% of the calories your body burns every day. The NEAT, the non-exercise activity, so any type of movement that is not consciously exercising at the gym or running or anything like that, which is about 15% of your daily calories, meaning this is the second biggest slice. Then there's exercise, so the calorie your body burns by actually exercising, which usually is about 5%. And then there is the thermic effect of food, which is the calories your body burns by eating and digesting, which is about 10%. And while you can increase the size of every slice of the pie, and with that the overall pie, there is a limit of how much you can actually impact that. Because yes, our calorie pie is also partly determined by our genetics. But how and how much? So according to research, about 40% of the differences in BMR, so the biggest, pie slice is determined by your genes. In terms of calories, that means that some people burn up to 300 calories more or less than other people just because of their genetics. Meaning that if you have two people, let's call them Emma and Haley, who are both women, who are both the same height, the same weight, the same age, and the same body composition, meaning they have the same body fat percentage, just because of their genetics, Haley might be able to burn 300 more calories a day than Emma. Just resting, but not only that, even if both Haley and Emma do the same workout, having the same fitness level, Haley might actually be burning about 100 to 300 calories more for the same workout, depending on the workout obviously, than Emma, just because of her genetics. So genetics can make a huge difference in how many calories your body burns every day. So yes, as so often, life is unfair. Speaking of unfair, does our metabolism actually slow down when we grow older? You've probably heard before that once you turn 30, your metabolism is gonna slow down. However, this paper from 2021 actually shows that your metabolism is pretty high before the age of 20, and then it actually stays the same from age 20 to age 60, and then only starts to slow down after the age of 60. So 30 is not the death of your metabolism, at least not biologically. However, probably lifestyle-wise, which is why you notice that people in their 30s tend to gain weight. It's not their metabolism, it is their habits. Which habits? Well, in general, many people in their mid or late 20s start their office job, where they sit a lot, so they move less. So their need, the second biggest size of your TDE pie, shrinks. Also, you have a lot less time, so you probably won't be doing your team sports where you have to train three times a week anymore once you have your job. Also, you probably won't go partying that much because you have to work. So you dance less. Also, so many people, especially women, start to lose muscle mass the older they get. Partly, again, because... They just use the muscles less and less and less. And also because many of them don't eat enough protein. And something that is usually the biggest culprit of this all is that you start to eat a little more every day. Just a little bit. Maybe because your work stresses you out. So you reward yourself with a little bit of, you know, yummy food. But not necessarily. You might be actually eating the same, but you've just been in a slight caloric surplus for years. 
So you slowly, very slowly are gaining weight. For example, when you want to try to be healthy once you're 30, which is amazing, you start eating an apple every day on top of what you're already eating. An apple has about 90 calories. So you're eating about 90 calories on top of what you're already eating. 90 calories every day for one year is about four kilos. I'm not saying stop eating apples. I'm just saying many of us underestimate the calories that we consume. And then we tend to be stressed out more because when we're younger, even though life feels like it's very stressful, it tends to be a lot less stressful than when we're actually adults and, you know, have to pay rent and stuff and maybe even have kids and are sleep deprived and all of that fun. And that can lead our cortisol levels to rise, our stress hormone. And when our cortisol levels are too high for a long amount of time, that might slow down our metabolism. And then there's yogurt dieting. The older we get, the more probable it is that we have at least once tried to diet to lose weight. And especially if we weren't well informed or well coached trying to lose weight, many of us approach weight loss way too extremely. Meaning many people eat too little, which can actually slow down your metabolism. Although that is reversible. So while you cannot change your genetics, you can indeed change the size of the slices of your TDE pie. Let's talk about how. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce you to today's sponsor, this little thing here, the BodyPod by Hume Health. BodyPod is not just another smart scale. It's a real body analyzer. It tells you almost exactly how much muscle mass you have, how much body fat you have, even how much fat you have around your organs, which is the very unhealthy type of fat. It's 98% as accurate as the gold standard, the DEXA scan, which is used by doctors and clinics. It's also HSA or FSA eligible for US residents and it's super easy to use. You just have to step on it, hold the handle in your hands and within seconds you'll get the results directly into your app, which is free by the way. And in the app you can make a whole body analysis. You can see how much muscle mass, how much fat mass you have in your arms, your legs, your trunk. You can even see your metabolic age and also obviously your weight and your BMI. But these won't matter anymore because what matters is your muscle mass and your fat mass. And the body pod helps you analyze and track exactly that. If you use this code within the next seven days, you get an extra discount on Hume House current sale. And with that, you can save up to 50%. Link in the description. So I really recommend you to get the body pod to actually track your progress in a way that makes sense. So the easiest and most effective slice you should focus on is your neat slice. So the non-exercise activity, which makes up so many more calories than actual conscious exercise. And it's so much easier to include more neat movements into your daily doing. There's a reason why hitting 10,000 steps a day is often mentioned as the hack to weight loss, apart from its health benefits. Because depending on your weight, walking 10,000 steps a day can burn around 300 to 600 calories, which is all you need for weight loss. But if you struggle with getting your steps in because, you know, we're all too busy or because the weather sucks because it's been raining for a while or because it's winter and you live in a cold country, something that I love for both myself and also to recommend to people is getting a walking pad because then you can just walk at home, even if the weather outside sucks or even if you don't have the time to walk. Because for example, then you can walk while having work meetings or while watching Netflix. I have the Kingsmith walking pad, which I love not only, but especially because it's foldable. Because as you can see, I live in a very small place, so I don't have the space for a huge treadmill or anything like that. I'll link you a discount link in the description. But next to walking, there are so many other things you, you can do every day to increase your need. But I have a whole video about teeny tiny habits that you can include in your daily doing to increase that. So make sure after this video, you're going to watch that. Next to the neat slice, there is the thermic effect of food, which can be influenced by what exactly you eat and how you eat. For example, the calories of a pineapple, when you eat it whole or, you know, in pieces, are worth less than when you eat the pineapple smooth because your body needs to burn energy to chew the pineapple and then also to digest it if it's still in pieces. But I also have a whole video about how to increase your thermic effect of food and also how to increase your basal metabolic rate. I'll link it for you up here and down below. And then the fourth slice is obviously exercise. We all know that exercise burns calories. But keep in mind that when you exercise, especially when you do high intensity cardio exercise, you also tend to get a lot hungrier, which is why some people are not the biggest fan of recommending cardio for weight loss, but rather to focus on strength training. Because when you do strength training, you gain muscle mass. And the more muscle mass you have, the bigger your BMR, your basal metabolic 
where it gets. Because muscles, just by being in your body, are eating up more calories than body fat. Plus, when you have a higher percentage of muscle mass, you also look slimmer, even if you weigh the same. Okay, so these things might not be big news to you. And if you do them and burn more calories every day, eat less, work out more, weight loss should be easy, right? Yeah, not always, as you might have noticed if you haven't been seeing progress. And there are basically two main reasons why you're not seeing progress when you want to lose weight. Either you're eating more than you think, slash you're burning less than you think, or you're doing it too extremely, meaning you eat too little and or are working out too much. How do you know which of the two it is? Track what you're eating and what you're burning, more or less, for a couple of days, maybe a week, just to get an idea. And it's not about 100 calories less or more, but usually you'll notice a bigger difference than what you were guesstimating. And if it's option one, you're eating too much or moving too little, the initial advice is actually applicable to you, but don't overdo it, which brings me to option number two. I get if you're impatient and if you want to see progress, but if you do it too quickly, you will mess up your health and also how your body looks because there's a reason why about 90% of diets or weight loss tries fail. And no, it's not willpower that's failing them, but it's usually one of four causes. First, two big deficits, which lead to adaptive thermogenesis, basically meaning slowing down your metabolism by reducing certain functions that are not vital. For example, periods for us women, but also hair growth for both genders. Dieting stress, because that raises cortisol, and as mentioned before, high cortisol levels can slow down your metabolism too. Loss of muscle, because when you eat too little, you don't only lose fat, but muscle mass, which decreases your BMR, as mentioned before, and or you're so over-restrictive that your cravings are making you crazy and you overeat or binge. And then because you overate or binged, you restrict even more. And then because you restricted even more, you're going back to binging and then you're caught in the very common binge restrict cycle. So what can you do to not make these four mistakes? First, do a small deficit. Yes, I know it sucks to be patient, but trust me, it's the only way to sustainably lose weight. That is what research shows. And also anecdotally, when you talk to people who have kept their weight off, they didn't do it quickly. Which is also a reason why things like Ozempic only make sense if you make sense, if you want to call it that, if you keep taking it for the rest of your life. Because when you stop it and you just go back to the way it was, your weight goes back to what it was or usually higher than that. What does a small deficit mean? Research suggests that it should be around 100 to 300 calories every day, especially if you work out because you work out regularly. Your body needs to have a certain amount of energy available for working out. And if it doesn't have that, that can cause low energy availability, which is not a term you need to remember. It's just important that you remember, especially if you work out, you need to eat enough. There is also the opinion that a deficit of up to 500 calories a day is also healthy and sustainable. There is a controversy about that. I personally like to recommend a slower deficit because it's a lot less risky than going too high. Unless you're a very big person and you just need a lot of energy. In general, try to aim for about 10% below your maintenance calories. So if you're currently burning 2000 calories every day, if you want to lose fat, aim for it. 1,800 calories minimum. And in order to not lose muscle mass, but only fat mass, you need to strength train and you need to eat a lot of protein. Not insane amounts, just really focus on your protein. Try to aim for about two grams of protein per kilo of body weight. I have a whole video about which steps exactly you need to do in terms of diet, exercise, and other lifestyle habits to lose fat and build muscle at the same time in a healthy way. But once you've started implementing all of this, how do you know it's actually working? Because there's nothing worse than putting in all your effort and then feeling like nothing's even happening. And then you're gonna lose motivation, which is one of the main reasons why people struggle to sticking to their weight loss journey. Because they do it for a couple of weeks, they weigh themselves and nothing's really changing. So they're thinking it's failing. And then they just throw in the towel because why should they even bother? Which brings me to the next point, the right progress tracking. Because it is not about your weight. Yes, of course, your weight does tell you a little bit. It does make a difference if you weigh 50 kilos more or less. But something way more important is your body composition, aka how much muscle mass you have and how much body fat you have. And also how much water retention you have because especially for us women during our menstrual cycle, we have a lot of water fluctuation, which can make up a couple of kilos. But losing water 
does not have anything to do with losing body fat. So what can you do instead of just looking at your weight? First, take pictures. Second, take measurements. Third, one of the best options and most reliable options you can do is actually analyze your body composition. So how much muscle mass you're gaining and how much body fat you're losing. Now, next to working out and eating right, there are two other pillars that are crucial for having a healthy and fast metabolism, and that is sleep and stress. Because when you don't sleep enough or not well enough, your hunger signals are going crazy and you'll want to eat more and especially more unhealthy stuff. And stress has similar effects on your eating habits. So if you don't want to make it harder for yourself to stick to a healthy diet and to not overeat, make sure to also take care of your sleep and your stress. This video is actually part of a little metabolism mini series. So I really recommend you to watch at least two videos where I share very easy, very doable habits that you can include in your daily life to make your TDE pie grow. And as always, make sure to be gentle to yourself and your body. And remember your body is beautiful in every size. Take care and see you in my next video.